Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to, I thought it might be fun to give a little demonstration of some little um, curiosity project I was working on. Um, just wanna, essentially what I've done is separated the infrastructure repo from a sort of a core um, software repo and um, using Terraform for the infrastructure and Ansible for the um, software. Um, so here I'm just showing what's not included in, in Git, it's sort of the secret stuff. Terraform stuff gets created and some um, keys get created up front. Um, so you can see I create deploy keys for GitHub and some instant keys. And, a, and I'm running a prod and a staging environment for, for this demo. Um, so you can see there's two secret sort of files that are, are generated. So that's the only prerequisites for getting started. Um, additionally, you would want to create the S3 state bucket, which I'll go into now. So here's a template showing some dummy values. So you'd want to define this as that file there. Um, you define the region and the bucket and the key of your Terraform state. And then of course you would also set up um, <clears throat> AWS CLI configure so this assumes that um, you can probably tweak it to use environment variables um, but I just kept it simple for now and then additionally you'd want to set up these uh, environment variables or, or Terraform variables um, so I'm using uh, Hetzner Cloud so there's a token from there I'm using Cloudflare there's a token from there and GitHub um, and then the owner because I'm not using my own account I'm using using an organization and then the core repo which is essentially the downstream uh, repo the reason I, I need that at this stage is that um, I get as part of the infrastructure I post the deploy keys um, and that means that when I come to running the core software, um, it's able to, um, if the repo was private, it's, it's able to um, pull the code. Uh, and then I also have the concept of a downstream state bucket, which can actually be the same as Terraform state bucket. Uh, I just use a different um, path, but it can also be separate. So what this is, is um, some, you know, extra files and things that are needed by the software. For example, the known hosts file, um, stuff like that. Um, and then there's other, um, you know, defaults like the server location, the server type, the subdomain, the domain. Um, so you could just configure each of these and, and sort of where your your public keys live. Um, and so just defining all of this, it's enough for this main template to work. Um, I'll let you, if you're interested, go and look at the code yourself. Um, it's about 130 lines of Terraform. So I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate. Um, actually, I, I abstracted everything with a make file. Um, so here's the, the commands actually. So I can say um, make help if I wanted to and it sort of prints out what I can run. So initially you would um, do make infra init and that would set up, if you look at here, uh, it would set up the um, backend conf that you, that you did. So this puts the Terraform state to the third-party cloud provider, which is in this case S3. Um, and then depending on which environment, and we, we uh, default to staging, um, it will select that as a workspace and then Terraform apply. So um, assuming we've already inserted, I'm just gonna show you, for example, that I can simply just do this, and it runs that command. I'm gonna pause the video because it takes a while to actually run. So now I'm busy just applying the infrastructure. So I'm gonna pause. Okay, so now that's finished. I can actually um, 
Now I'll do this to do the prod environment. So now you see it's selecting the prod environment and applying just the same. I'll pause again. Okay, now that's done. Um, just to note some outputs that um, come from Terraform State. So it's showing where there's a sort of a downstream, da sorry, downstream state bucket. And that's for things like the known host object. Uh, also, there's an FQDN um, environment variable. It's an, well, an invariable, sorry, um, that is used by the software downstream. So now I can actually move to, um, I can just show you quickly that it doesn't exist at the moment. There's no site up, it doesn't exist. So now I can go to the core repo and a few more vars to, to fill out here. So I'll show you the template. Uh, it, it looks a bit intimidating, but essentially you can copy and paste this and you, you just define, um, you know, how, how it should look. Um, so you put your own um, state bucket in here. Um, the repo, so it could be a fork. So you put your core repo in there. This is the one that will be checked out against the remote server. And then for each env, there's env, there's, sorry, there's staging and prod. And there's a variable and then it's type. Often these types aren't really used yet. I kind of just followed the um, Terraform format, um, possibly overkill, but I found that it was probably just easier to, to keep to that. Um, because what I do is I kind of, um, you know, bring in the variables from here and the variables from the remote state and I kind of put them into a single object to be queried. Um, so I wanted to keep things quite generic uh, so that there's not all sorts of specifics. You can look at the code yourself and please let me know if any silly things I've done. Um, so essentially this is just paths to the keys. We would probably want to manage this not, you know, across a team. The whole point of this whole idea is so that the team can uh, fetch the latest state. So the next step would also be to fetch the latest keys from like a Ansible vault or sorry, a, a HashiCorp vault or something like that or some other um, program, uh, so software, sorry. Um, and then, yeah, there's a bunch of dummy variables you'd create. There's one, you know, basic auth for traffic. Later on, this would be... Um, removed and integrated with some other auth system, but that's for the future steps. Um, and then you can choose your provider. In my case, I use Cloudflare Cloudflare, because uh, in Terraform, I've already used that. Um, but here you, you set that up, you set up uh, your resolvers, um, like where the DNS is looking and then some other variables. So this is for the DNS challenge specific to traffic. Um, you know, some emails, some, and some settings. So it's not that many, even though the file's huge, and then there's a repetition for prod. So essentially you just copy paste this template and, and make your variables right. And then, <clears throat> then you should be in a position to just um, make play. And you'll notice here that it actually will first do some things localhost. So it will ensure that all the correct collections are installed. It will get the latest state from Terraform. It will um, merge those together. Um, um, so uh, that's interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, anyway, sorry. it. <clears throat> It, it reads a bunch of things. It downloads the, you can see it downloaded the known host. It created an inventory file on the fly. That inventory file has some secrets. So here it is. I'm not going to uh, show you because I've got some secrets. But I can show you the template. Essentially, that's how it looks. Uh, but, uh, you know, not that pretty. It's Ginger 2 templating and it's just 
pushing all the variables that it gets from the states and everywhere else. Uh, and then it's kind of creating a user because originally there's a root user, so it's creating the main root user, then it's locking down root, um, and then it's restarting SSH. It's doing all the things needed to provision the system, and it's doing staging and prod at exactly the same time with their respective variables. Um, so um, I'll kind of pause and then talk you through once it's done because it's pointless, uh, it takes quite a, a bit of time. Okay, so now the rest of the steps have taken place. Um, it's kind of disabling root login. When it's yellow, it means something changed. Otherwise, green means it just remains the same as it was because it's an idempotent script. So that means that it, the SSH was restarted, for example. Um, then we're kind of checking that apt is responsive. We're doing an update, we're rebooting the system. If there was an update, if there wasn't an update, it won't reboot the system, for example. And then I'm using a third party uh, role to install Docker. So there's a whole bunch of mechanisms to install Docker. Um, so that was all of that. And then once that's done, I copy the application repository deploy key from, from my computer here over to there. And this just means that I am now able to do a clone of the private repository. Actually, my my copy is is now public, but maybe a fork could be private. So this will just work regardless. Um, and then for security, I, I remove the deploy key from the host so that it, yeah, it doesn't need to stay there. Um, and then I create a .env file for the template and a Docker, a Docker Compose override. So those are two extra files that sort of um, go into the full Docker um, system. I can give you a sneak peek. Essentially, the override is simply uh, the DNS challenge variable key. So you see it's all generic. So someone could have used... Uh, Cloud, um, other, something other than Cloudflare and it would produce the correct environment variable, sorry, the correct override. And then there's some extra environment variables that get put in. Uh, so not everything is statically def defined. There's still um, some environment variables. I can SSH in and, and show you the system. Um, and then all the services of that Docker Compose file, essentially, is just traffic at this point. Um, and what's nice about this is that I can create another repo that just has the correct labels on that system. So I can create another application stack independent of this, um, but I can refer to the uh, external network. Um, so as long as I put it in the right network with the right labels, it gets discovered. Um, so this means I can separate my concerns. Um, so any other application stack, I can just put <clears throat> the labels uh, as an override um, in, in some other um, software stack. Don't know if that made sense. Um, <clears throat> so now it's all up. I can actually go to the instance. I put this in earlier. So now I can sign in. And there we go. We also have connection is secure. This came from uh, Let's Encrypt. Everything's automated. Everything's looking healthy. This moment in time, there's only the traffic to show you, so not that exciting. Uh, similarly, I can uh, go to the, the, the other one, which is traffic.staging.rethinkcode. And yeah, I'm not going to put the user and password in now, but it is up and um, hmm, it says it's not secure. Interesting. So sometimes there's DNS propagation issues. Actually, when I put in the username and password, it it now does say it's secure. So that was just the fact that I hadn't logged in yet. 
So now you can see we got two domains, one is staging, one is the other one. Um, okay, I think that was all I wanted to show. And then the other nice thing is if, I, if I'm done with the environment, because it's just like a, a kind of a sand box, I can just run this command. And now I'm destroying the whole prod environment just as quickly as I created it, so uh, don't have to be paying unnecessarily. Um, I think I'll leave it there. Any questions, feel free, and the repo is live. I'll, I'll put some links and, and everything. Um, and yeah, hopefully that you know, is mildly uh, interesting. Um, and always happy to collaborate, so if you have any questions, just let me know.